In this video, we're going to look at how you can find anyone online using four different methods. Sounds creepy, right? Well, open source intelligence tools are used to proactively gather intelligence and can aid us as cybersecurity analysts to protect and defend against malicious activities. When it comes to OSINT, using a people search engine can be a valuable tool for verifying identities all the way through to gaining more information about an individual. It allows us to monitor a number of different ways to crawl the web and find the piece of information you're looking for. So let's get straight into it. The people search engine tool we'll be using today is Spokio. I've actually already done a lot of walkthroughs of OSINT tools on this channel already. But what you can find with Spokio, and as you'll see today, is actually quite mind-blowing. And that's because they have access to over 120 plus social networks and over 6 billion consumer records. So let's put this in a real life situation and try find this Instagram user. But just remember that in this video, you're seeing real information about real people. So due to privacy and safety concerns, I have to blur out certain things. But anyway, when you're doing these type of investigations, you want to try find out as much information as possible. That can be from Google searching or just going to different social media profiles. You can see from this user's Instagram, we can already pull key information that will help us locate which individual this is and split that from other individuals. So we've gained information about their age, the type of industry they work in and where they are roughly from in the world. So we'll note that down and jump into the Spokio platform to begin our searching. So there's four different ways we can go about searching an individual that can be by name, email, phone or address. Depending which information you have, name will probably be the strongest one to start with. So we'll start with that. We know from his profile his name is probably Philip Jones, so we'll hit the search button and you can see we've got over 7,000 results. We also have a map on the left hand side which splits out the areas in which these individuals are from and that will come helpful shortly. Going through the results we can see their names, their ages, where they've lived, who they're related to and just any address information. Obviously we don't want to click through all 7,000 results so you have the option to also filter by age or address. But as we already know from their Instagram profile, they reside in the Kansas area, we can go to the Kansas point and click into that. And that will filter the results down to only 90 people. Now we can make this a lot easier to go through. And we can also, if you're familiar with the area, have a look at the map and click and drag and zoom in where necessary if you want to split it by a section. As we know, our individual is between 37 to 39 years old. We can sort it by the age and start to flick through looking at that age specifically. So we've only got some 34 year olds. We have a 37 year old. We can see they're not related to anybody called Laura as we got from the profile. So that's something key to look out for. And there we have it. We have a 38 year old who is related to someone called Laura. So that's a profile we're interested in. We can jump into that. You can see we're given a lot of information already, the current address, the past addresses, we have a phone number, an email address, and we can also export this if necessary. There's loads of information here, more than any other OSINT tools that I've really seen. And you can see we can click into all the related profiles. We can see Laura is roughly around the same age as him, which suggests he could be married to Laura, as we saw in his Instagram profile. And we can also see what other social media profiles are linked to him, if any, which in this case there isn't. But we're looking for anything else that will solidify whether this is the individual we're looking for. So we'll dive into maybe the personal information to have a look. When we click into that, we can see just historical records or anything related to this individual. So we can see when they were most likely born, anything to do with wealth, and we also have work. So we see that we have a job title, HCA Holdings. And doing a quick Google search, we can see this is a healthcare industry, which is what we gain from the user's Instagram profile. So now I'm very solidified that this is the user that we're looking for. So that's a really good successful result of finding that Instagram user. Now let's have a look at one of the other ways to find one of the users. So next up, we have a reverse email lookup. This allows you to be able to find the owner of an email address. Let's say you've received some suspicious communication or you've come across an email address online and you want to check its legitimacy. So all we need to do is have the email. And once we have that, we can paste that in for searching. As you can see, I'm populating this with a Gmail address and I can hit the search button. And within seconds, I'm already given 10 people matches. We have potential social media profiles from this email address which we can dive into individually or we can scroll down into the persons of interest. 
So we have a wide range of ages and we have also locations and their relatives. And if we're interested in any of these persons, we can jump in to see the results. So looking at James Hill, who's aged 42, we've got current addresses, previous addresses, and people of interest related to this person. So a lot of information when you're just looking at an email address. And as mentioned, you can jump into these profiles and also set up an alert if you want to get any updates on changes for that profile. And if you're interested in going to their social media, you can easily click onto them from the Spokio platform. So a really good tool if you only have an email address. Next up, we'll look at a reverse phone lookup. So for this one, you will of course need to enter a 10 digit phone number. And once you do this, Spokio will go through all of their records and try to identify who the person of interest is behind the number that you've entered. So it's really good for finding out more information if you've come across this number online. So as an example, we've entered this mobile information in and we'll hit the search button. Straight away, we can see we found an owner called Jill Baker. And further to this, we have a location and we also have more information on the carrier, number portability and whether the phone is active or not. So we can see it resides in America, New York. It's wireless and we have more information on the person behind this cell phone number that we entered. So we can easily just report this number from there if we're deeming it suspicious or go to view more details behind Jill Baker. So the number that I entered has come up as a phone number for this user and we can see other registered phone numbers or even email addresses for this user. So this is really good and helpful because sometimes you don't have the person's name that you're looking for or even their email address. So from something like a cell phone number, we can find lots of information. Next up, we then have a reverse address lookup. So similarly, this works to the reverse email and phone lookup. We will need to have the address of the person that we're looking for. So all we need to do once we have that is enter that information in. And once you do that, Spokio will do its thing and find as much information as possible on that individual. So we've entered the information and all we need to do is populate that by hitting the search now button. Once we do that, you can see we've jumped straight to that address. We have a very useful map that shows us exactly the location of the address that we searched. So we can have a look around very easily within the Spokio platform. And then we can just go through all the information. So straight away, we're given the owner and the occupants of this address, the estimated market value and details of the interior. So really, really useful if you're trying to find out information about a house as well. We have a whole host of information about the residents and we can individually go through each profile if required. So you can gain a lot of information from open source platforms like Spokio just by knowing certain details about a user. So give it a go. The link will be in the description below and I recommend trying it out and having a search for different types of users based on either their name, email address, phone number or just address just like we've done in this video. If you found it useful, do head to the description and join our Discord because we discuss all types of OSINT tools and look at cybersecurity in general. If you enjoyed the video, do leave a like down below. It massively helps it out. And let me know if you've tried out Spokio and what type of searches you've been doing.